Hi guys, this is the second part of the troubleshooting and repair video of the Tektronix 2201 oscilloscope. In the last video we found a problem with uh, the uh, TL494 pulse width modulation control integrated circuit um, in the power supply. We found that it was not outputting any uh, voltage reference and uh, it was not switching on the output either. So I've ordered some, um, put them in. So let's have a let's have a play and uh, disorder the old one, put a new one in, and see whether that fixes the problem. Uh, one thing I noticed is that on the silk screen it says TL494. However, the actual chip is TL594. I'll show you the chip itself. So you can see that the chip itself is TL594. Uh, now, <laughs> I should have noticed this before. Um, I went by the silk screen marking and it was a bit silly of me. But there's no major difference between the 494 and 594. The main difference is that the 494 is 5% tolerance on the 5 volt supply and the 594 is 1% tolerance. And the other main difference is that the 594 has a under voltage lockout circuit added to this uh, which 494 doesn't have. I can live without those features and you know I've, I've ordered the parts already so I'm just gonna stick it in and uh, see if it fixes the problem if it's a little bit out of tolerance you know it doesn't really matter um, for for the purpose of the repair and if it's too far out then I can always order the, the correct chip and uh, swap it later once I found out that the uh, problem is with the power supply this is the little culprit here TL594CN uh, I'm not going to be taking any chances here, I'm not going to try and disorder the entire chip since I'm not planning on saving it. Just going to take my side cutters and cut pin each pin out. I'll rather make sure that the the board is in a perfect condition after this is desoldered then to save this chip. Right, now it's time to desolder the pins. This is gonna make my life a lot easier since I don't have to worry about removing all the pins out together. I'll just desolder each individual pins, clean up the holes and then I just insert a new chip and solder it back in. I'm actually going to remove the transformer. Um, I wanna get in there with the soldering iron. Should be fairly easy, it's just one bolt. That gives us a, a very nice access to the chip and you can see the other one there as well should have done that at start and I should be able to get in with a soldering iron and pull those pins out okay so the new chip is in just give it a little bit of a clean with a flux cleaner and a brush and dry it up And we'll do the same to the other side. Make sure it's all nice and dry. And that's it. Repair done. Now it's time to check whether it works and whether maybe we have some more troubleshooting to do. So the transformer's back in. Now it's time to have a look whether our power supply has been fixed. The first thing I would expect to happen when I power it up, if the magic smoke doesn't escape, then uh, I would expect that fan to start going around. And that would be uh, a good sign that there's been an improvement. And then we'll give it a measure um, and see whether the test point voltages are as they should be. But the main slate is in. And so what we need to do now is power it up and see what happens. Now, 
I really recommend when you're powering up something that you've just fixed that you use um, safety goggles uh, just in case something blows up uh, you don't want it, you know, any fragments uh, ending up in your eyes let's see power it up okay the magic smoke did not escape yet let's measure the voltages so we got a fluke there That's a good sign. I just noticed there's a little dot there. There we go, look at that. Okay, so let's just measure the voltages before we get over excited. So the minus 5.2 rail, 6.4 volts, plus 5.2 rail. 6.3 volts minus 8.6 rail minus 10 and a half volts that's quite a lot plus 8.6 rail 10.37 volts 38 volt rail which we had before is now 40 and 100 volt rail is 100 volts there is obviously still something wrong so let's have a look I did have a little bit of a think about this and I decided to take the links back out and see if we can adjust the voltages. 6.4 or whatever that was seems a bit too high and I'm a bit worried uh, that I'm going to blow something up. So I'm going to take the links back out again. I'm um, going to power it up and there is one little pot there uh, just by the inverter trans uh, transformer and I believe that adjusts voltage which uh, would be one of the rails and if we adjust uh, one of the rails all the other ones should follow and correct so let's just do that just for a peace of mind so let's power it back up and just for the record just in case uh, we make the wrong choice I'm going to measure every single point of this pot so Actually, stick it into the four digit mode. Okay, so I'll just note down the values. So that one is 1.664. Let's drop in. Let's say 1.663. That one is 0 0.308. Let's say 0. And that one is 1.2773. Let's come back and see how they changed. So that keeps dropping. I guess I'll let it warm up a little bit. Alright, my impatience won. Okay, so now this doesn't do anything. So I better put it back on the original value. 1.2773. Close enough. Hmm. I would have expected that one to be the one. <laughs> There's no other pot in the power supply that I can see. Hmm. Strange. Okay, so now that we have 
sort of links back in. I'm going to stick the storage board back in as well. Okay. Now we can close this down. For the moment, I'm going to leave the um, RS-232 board out. And so we switch all these off. I'm going to put a little screw in there just to make sure we don't short anything out. Just to hold it in the right position. check underneath make sure nothing is touching that shouldn't be and I think it's time for the moment of truth we'll power it up and see what we get hopefully nothing's gonna blow up okay so we power it up moment turned off okay Mains lead. In. Remember, glasses on. And let's see. I can hear the fan kicking in. And we've got something. Right, let's have a look. Intensity, yep, focus. Hey, look at that. That's quite good. Position. Hey, right, that's channel two. Channel one, both. Let's see both channels. Hey, right, that's the first channel. Second channel. Brilliant. Yeah, let's see if we can rotate that. With our little pot wheeler. Hey, okay, there we go. Okay, so I call that a success. Um, I'll assemble it, put the serial board in as well, and we're going to do some initial testing as well. Okay, so I'll pack up for the moment. Uh, it's getting quite late here, um, but once I get service manual, I'll do some calibration, and I'll do a little video as well. Um, I'm quite happy, um, got it fixed, um, very simple fault, but you know, um, you, you never know whether it's, uh, it's going to be simple or not, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching, if you like the video, um, please uh, click on the thumbs up button, if uh, you found any help or, um, or just, you know, if you found it interesting, I would really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Take care.